fight another day in Division 2. A, a four-way tiebreaker for seventh place would be pretty hype. I'm all about tiebreakers. Um, I have experienced some fun ones and some long days and two days and three days. Mm -hmm. Four teams might make it go on forever. I don't exactly know how a four-way tiebreaker would work. I know three is like a 1-1-1 one, one, one situation, but four teams all of a sudden, uh, we're yeah. stepping into new territory. <laughs> Could do like a, I don't know, a little mini bracket or something. I'm not <laughs> Do like a little double limb bracket to decide who gets first and last, since those are the two spots that matter the most. Double but, limb, all BO1s, turbo games. Yeah. Oh, dude, I want to I see... Pro players play turbo or ability draft. I saw Purge hosting his ability draft tournament the other day. That was a lot of fun. Seeing I'm, seeing pros play different modes. I'm down for that. Like, just have different modes played for these pros for something that kind of means a lot. Maybe yep. like group. Like, if you win, you get to choose your group, and the uh, the team that loses Ooh. goes to the other group. Yeah, one of the tournaments had a one v one mid to settle tiebreakers. That was kind of hype too. I'm down with that. I know DPC, DPLCDA back a couple of years ago had like for draft priority was 1v1 mids. Nice. Just play a quick 1v1 before you get into the match. <laughs> That's so distracting. Like you're, the team's like strategizing what they're going to pick and stuff. And then one player's like, guys, I got to go, you know, win this 1v1. <laughs> and that was the problem was the community was voting on who they wanted to play in the 1v1 mid. And then they mm. also got to pick the hero for the player. So, oh, like, no. these 1v1 mids were, like, always going to the 15-minute time limit because nobody would die. <laughs> They'd have, like, some mid 1v1 alchemist or something. <laughs> yeah, it was, like, Alk or Earth Spirit, I remember, was, like, one or two of them. It's just like, all right, well, you also have okay. Innocence playing mid lane against, like, nothing to uh, not nothing to say, but, like, uh, against, like, Ori. It's like, oh, that's a great matchup yeah. for him. <laughs> gonna win that Fine. draft yeah, yeah. <laughs> look that's why you gotta make it like cm versus cm mid <laughs> then maybe he's got a chance looking at oh. these three lanes arms all of a sudden well Damn. he's eating some damage here and they do, do a little bit of a lane shuffle yeah kind of kind of cool um looks like yeah both teams ended up swapping their lanes around to try to get the lanes they wanted yeah, some good damage coming in from the, the Tusk and Timbersaw there early on. Or some making sure he gets this lane matchup that he was hoping for. So, let's see how the lanes end up going as... Uh, this is all fight for, for Penguin Squad. Like, felt there's not much on the line for them. They're hoping that maybe for uh, Studios... Art Squad? I can't remember uh, this dog. point. <laughs> dog Studios? Dog, dog, dog Studios. Jam. Well, that Fort Studios <laughs> wins because then they'll have a chance at a oh, tiebreaker yeah, yeah. for a second. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they need uh, Dog Champ to yeah, Dog Champ to lose slash Fort Studios to win and then they could get first, which, you know, prize I think it's like a thousand or two thousand dollars difference. Um, plus pride. Bragging rights always. You yeah. Know, we didn't beat you in the season, but we were number one anyway. Yep. Is uh what it's all about. Trying to figure out which of these lanes is going to be most aggressive. And by the way, they've also got this Lycan sitting mid. Yeah. So I, the big standout. Yeah, that, that, yeah, mentioned the lane swaps so or having your off lane. Or, usually it's just side lane swapping, but. Oh, crawler. Okay. Can't get away. Thought he was going to sneak through those trees, but unfortunate for him that Chen just had the extra bit of damage in. Yeah. I think the thing with the lane swap is, you know, it was actually interesting. I was looking at. Pengo when it was picked up on Dota buff, TA is like the third best st statistical counter to Pengo. And yeah, this mid 1v1 matchup um, goes really well for TA uh, with the Melt Strike just kind of chunking away at the Pengo. It's a really tough matchup to play and they sent Solji to the safe lane as well. I don't know if this is the best way to kind of answer. I think you just have to kind of suck it up and play the bad matchup, but because now he's also in a rough matchup top. Like looking at the CS, this lane, this is, it looks like game one. This is what the CS looked like three minutes in game one. Oh. Arms and Chen and chased a little bit over bottom. The tag team runs out, but they've got the whirling death to get the kill there on a Chen and Arms jumping in on this. If that timber chain had a better angle, maybe they get the kill on to Arms. Speaking of the CS, by the way, it's like, oh, you've got wolves in the lane. Well, my side blades are also getting me extra CS. Yeah, like he's picked up a couple wolves here and there. Yeah, this it just feels odd because I don't think Lycan has any kind of an edge here and doesn't really do better than the pango mid and then you're you're gonna like in mid like you want a pango mid who gets a bottle hits level six can rotate around a bit um it just feels like they've set themselves up to have a 
you know, a worse game with this. And not to mention, you've got players out of their comfort zone. Like, Fade playing mid against, you know, mid laners, like, he's just going to naturally not do as well. Like, that's, he's not expected to be a proficient mid laner when it comes to, you know, just like standard, like, creep equilibrium and, you know, just the way you exploit waves. You, you know, mid laners are usually the ones using their glyph to kind of get extra creeps or deny last hits from their opponents. And those are just things he's not going to be familiar with. Uh, this CS is atrocious right now. The lanes are going horribly for Felt and Arms. Oh, Ooh. a little TP, yeah. or a little Timber Chain under the tower. That's never the best feeling in the world. <laughs> so one of those earlier on, too, where I was like, oh, you already got good harass in. No need to, to go for this Timber Chain, too. But, yeah, this he's not even got any points in the reactive. They're going to snowball in. Wow, they'll get the kill on Arms. The double cookie crawler they will be traded, but they also lose Shu in the top lane. Oh boy. Yeah, and this Pengo with just nine last hits, make it 10 now, but absolutely brutal lane compared to the 28 11 denies of snow on Monkey King. These lanes are being absolutely stomped. Yeah, I am starting to worry about Felt with the way the lanes are going, and this is kind of rough. Yeah. I think sending, yeah, I mean, I'd said before, I'll say one last time, like, just not sending Pengo mid was a, a big mistake. They're probably realizing it now it's just maybe too late to do anything about it. Got to make their bed and line it too, and they're going to suffer through this laning setup. Marvis wants to come forward, but I don't think he really wants to do that. Meanwhile, they'll lose the Pango top lane like this. All three lanes are struggling mightily, and... Crawler, you'll get hit with a scatter bus, but Arms doesn't want to fight into this at no. the moment. Yeah. Timber with this 2 3 0 build just has so much nuke damage that he can dish out with the magic stick and soul ring in five seconds. A double nuke is like quick, easy, four, 500 damage. Uh, really love this skill build against Ursa, who just never really got into a position where he can use the Fury Swipes to bully the Timber Soul because he was always getting bullied first. So he's always been too low health to actually go for these right clicks. They're gonna go under tower again. Yeah. Arms hit with a timber chain, turns it oh on boy. crawler. The tower will okay. not kill him because he'll end up dying there to the snap fire. So maybe uh, slow it down <laughs> on the aggression. Yeah. I, I don't, I, it's kind of fun to see because like they've just kept armed, like they keep harassing him. He's got a ring of health now, so his lane gets a whole lot better and he's not gonna get yeah, bullied out of lane quite as easily. There's a quick DC comes out, but. Yeah, that, that that's a nice kill for for him to to get. Well, I think what, did he get it or a snap fire? Yeah, so snap fire got it, but that that kind of stabilizes this lane a bit. It's still under a one k gold lead. Usually, when you're you know winning all three lanes with CS wise, like I think game one we saw like a almost like a two k gold lead at like seven or eight minutes in. So it hasn't been a complete disaster, but it's definitely bad given that this TA is going to be hitting all these strong early game item timings, likely take an early Roshan. Uh, and if you take that Roche away from a draft with Ursa and Lycan, that can be absolutely devastating for Felt. Yeah, this could be a bit of an issue. And if you look at the net where it's like, look at where TA and Monkey King are. That's... Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the reason that the net worth lead isn't bigger is just the, the supports. Like, you know, Penguin Squad have, supports have just been a bit more sacrificial. Whereas Snapfire getting a kill has a bit more farm. You know, you... Ignore the supports, and it's like, you know, it is about a 2k gold lead going Penguin Squad's way. Yeah, so, is the support difference... Like, yeah, that's what's making the net worth close, but is the support difference going to make a big play at the early part of this game? Like, is there really a, that much of a difference between a Jakira with 700 net worth and a Snap with 1600 net worth? No, it's... I mean, it's stuff like maybe having boots, but Tusk went boots first... Um, Jakiro doesn't have boots. He's, you know, isn't going to have boots for a little while, but stuff like this doesn't really matter. What matters when it, you look, talk about supports early game is just levels. Like, you know, w what's the level six timing of Snapfire? Like, when does Mortimer's Kisses come online? Um, Tusk, similar thing with the Walrus Punch. So I think when it comes to these supports here, you're looking much more at XP being the, the big difference maker early on. And all it takes is like one or two fights where these supports get some assists on the Penguin Squad side and suddenly they'll get like a couple hundred gold out of nowhere, free boots. Etc. Etc. So Timber is back. Okay. Good news. Let's see if they. Uh, there we go. G or the GWR is my favorite these days. Go when ready. Yep. 
TA going to the, the Dragon Lance. So obviously we saw that early in the TA game. Meanwhile, Snow, Boundless Strike, and trying to get this kill onto this Pango once more. Meanwhile, Satoshi okay. ends up dying bottom. I was not expecting that. Arms is going to get traded just barely. That tag team had run out. If he had a chance to jump away, he might have uh, escaped. Good recognition from that Ursa and Snapfire, though, that they could kill the Timber there before the Tusk came back. Still, I think, worse it, worth it for the Ursa just to get that kill, even though he trades away his own life. I'm a little surprised that, like, uh, this hasn't happened more often without reactive armor. <laughs> just going that 2-3 greed. Yeah. He's just been so low in health. That's, like, the first time where it felt like he had levels and health. Like, he's got that level 3 Fury Swipes, the Ring of Health, and now we're going to see him, I think, constantly kind of run at and go on this Timber and try and punish the fact he has zero points in reactive armor. But now they've got Timber Chain. Yeah. They have a Whirling Death in a second. And one shot, one right click, Timber one opportunity. Timber Chain and eventually the kill. But now Crawler, he'll die under the tower for sure. This, this is fine, though. Hit. I think Arms is really happy with this. I don't think he should be chasing the Timber. You're going to end up wasting your time. Just take these creeps under the tower. Um, but yeah, this, this Timber can't really play as aggressive as it'd like anymore without the reactive armor points, which just aren't going to come anytime soon. This bottom lane is seemingly starting to Stop swing wing. the way of Wukong. Balance strike. Chen just came here and dies. Okay. That's back to back deaths for this uh, Snapfire. No. Pango. Interesting. The one halfway to level six. Definitely the one who's suffered the most from this laning setup and the way Feld have played. I mean, I talk about Lycan not being a comfortable in the 1v1 made. I'm sure Solji, like, safe lane Pengo with a support leeching his speed. He's probably, like, he's looking at this like, man, how am I not level six? It's eight and a half minutes. Oh, boy. Ice path down on the ground. Balance strike and a kill onto the Pengo. That's going to slow down that level six even longer. Shu, well, he is dead to snow. And when you get snow in your shoes, it's going to be a, a, a bad time. That's for sure. This might be the tier one down, which means Pango is going to be searching even longer for level six yeah. and, and comfort. And Snow's just having the freest game. 4 0 1, 51 last hits, 20 denies. Has an Echo Saber coming out soon. Soldier, he just TP'd in. Is he going to die again? They, Surely they not. Got snowball. Do they pull him in? Yeah, they do. They've got the They've Jingu. They have the him. damage. Oh. Wow, he's so oh, tilted. Oh, boy. That's just like a tilt death there. Just TP's in to die. The, it's forcing Lycan to now come and make this rotation. He doesn't have shapeshift for about eight seconds, though. I'm not sure when that was yeah. used. Maybe mid lane for some kind of a play. But And with Lycan gone, TA's taking the mid tier one tower. This is just a disaster for Felt. They're like trying to chase snow. They've got three bounty runes. Fade's like, oh, I have to pick these up? I forgot about that. Uh, Ursa's going for Kid, yeah. but now the snowball and potentially a turn. Almost. Also, they use shapeshift to come mid. Can they get kid, a kill here? kid was under a sentry there. Definitely. <laughs> I think Lycan was coming thinking maybe they can get this kill. They see Kid here, and he's a bit low on mana. Oh. oh. They know where he is. Is there detection? Oh. Somebody, yeah, there's the sentry. There's the kill. That only works for so long. No. Timber's coming in for the punish, though. Yeah, if you can kill arms, that's a decent trade. Snowball in. Timber chain across. They get the kill to oh. arms. And now Satoshi's in this weird cliff He's area. Stuck, yeah. And he has to get up with the timber chain. So not able to really do more than that. Yeah, may have had another kill if he didn't get stuck there. Cookie, stun, and crawler. He's going to die here to fate. And goes thinking about chasing Timber, though. Gets out of there. Level 4 Timber Chain. Still no points in the reactive armor. He's just been having a great time just with the nukes. Top T1 Tower still kept alive somehow. I mean, the somehow is Tree and Protector. This hero just keeps towers alive and finally going to go down with the Siege Wagon here. Comes in. Ice Path. Wukong. say He's kind of nice. getting away from this. That's a little bit scary, but, uh, well, <laughs> one more right click to get the kill. Monkey's like every man for himself. I'm out of here. Yeah, see you later, dude. Primal Ooh. Spring finds Fade. That's solid for him, but well, he's got Boundless Strike. The kiss is coming I... through. They'll look for the stun, but they end up getting the Whoa. kill on the chance. So only one kiss comes over and Fade ends up falling too. And they're also going to get 100 gold thanks to that Helm of the Dominator creep. 
Yeah, Snap just kind of was running towards those Ancients alone, smoked up, gets popped and gets kind of killed by the Timber. Meanwhile, Lycan was elsewhere, which is what the Kisses were being used on. So it was kind of this disjointed uh, gank attempt. And they're not done. Oh, this would be Arvis. a huge kill. Oh, yeah. boy. Yeah, they're starting to stack it up. Almost 6,000 gold here for this Monkey King. And that's Echo Saber, right? Yeah. Now, losing this bottom tier one tower, but they'll be more than happy with what they're getting elsewhere on the map. I mean, tier one tower has also been kept alive for quite a while with the living armor. That's the one thing this tree and protect has really brought to the table. It slowed down some of the snowball from Penguin Squad. But if they get this mid tier one tower and get themselves that rotation, we haven't really seen this TA at all. And TA will have treads deso fairly soon, especially if she gets left alone in these ancients. They don't have the... Oh. Oh. Wow. Shoot I was going to say, they don't have Liquid Fire over level 1, so the tower damage that this uh, yeah. Jakiro is doing is not a lot. I think it's, you know, it's fine. This is the build you you want. Obviously, liquid more Liquid Fire would give them more tower damage, but they're not picking Jakiro for the tower damage. They pick Jakiro for the, the strong lane, plus, you know, the control from Ice Path has just got more value oh, right now. Swashbuckle was already used. He's trying to get into the Rolling Thunder. Primal Spring, Snowball, Ice Path, Balance Strike, the control is consistent and consecutive, and they'll get another kill onto this Pango, who is now 0-4-1, and this Tier 1 tower should not be long for this world. Man, Solji's game is just being completely destroyed. They may get more. Yeah, they're gonna they will get more. For the cookie away, and they've got the Ice Path. That means another kill. Arms comes in, dual breath, Crawler's dead, Balance Strike, Wukong's. Ooh, pink pole, ah, squeak it on by. Okay. So. Oh, Helm Creep. Got it. 1K, now 2K lead here for Penguin Squad. Let's roll up the odds for esportsbet.io. And it's uh, Penguin Squad basically making it 50 50. Yeah. Um, you know, only a 1K goal. It feels like they've had all the momentum making all the plays, but. You know, it is, I think, still a more well rounded draft on the felt side. It's just like what we've seen out of. Penguin Squad has just been like, go, 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 run at the enemy, kill them again and again. Um, but they have not been prioritizing their own farm as much, especially on heroes like Timbersaw. I feel like Satoshi could be in for a rough game. Like, he did a really good job pressuring the lane with this build, but now he's a Timber with no reactive armor, a little bit underfarmed. So he's going to try to find a way to maybe recover a bit. But if Penguin Squad, you know, get this TA Deso and just take Aegis and get tower after tower, the game quickly will swing their way. That's kind of what felt we're trying to do in game one, but they got caught in the Roshan pit, so we just have to make sure if you're Penguin Squad that you get Roshan without any kind of team fight going wrong. Are they going to try and do this before the, the death? So they get Satoshi right. bottom. Like, that's what you were talking about, and I was thinking maybe with this yeah. double damage, they just go for Rosh. They could. Yeah, they're pinging it. Especially when you see those heroes bottom uh, and also the, the Kisses being on cooldown. Uh, there's also no Shapeshift. They kind of know these things. Uh, so, yeah. No Deso, no problem. This Roche just melting. Honestly, that'll put the Deso pretty much into existence with that gold taken from Roche. And now you're, it's Deso in with Aegis. Like, the timings kind of work out well anyway. Yeah, and they can kind of just group up and take some objectives now. I'm curious where maybe the, the Timber's going to fit in, because usually that's like, okay, he'll frontline a bit, maybe tank some tower shots, but he's just going to be playing more as like this spell casting backliner, jumping some supports or, you know, blowing up the Lycan summons in a fight. TA in the front, though, should do well. There's a lot of things to break through refraction uh, with the Lycan summons, some of the Snapfire damage over time, Swashbuckle, but with an Aegis, it should be pretty safe for a kid to, to frontline a bit. Uh, Satoshi cutting the creeps. They're going to try and yep. keep this tower alive, but with the Deso, this is going to be pretty quick. Yep. They sweep through the trees, look for Shu, not going to find him. I'm not sure you can really defend this one, especially with how strong and farmed Snow is on this Monkey King, not to mention the TA as well. Yeah, this tier two's gone. Yep. Mid lane, meanwhile. Pengo trying to get a T1 tower of his own, but Crawler is maybe setting up for a gank here. He's already TP'd in preemptively. And yeah, I think Solji kind of catching wind of this is backed off. So tier one tower stays up. They've got the Diffusal Blade, which is that cheap fighting item here for the Pangolier. But I don't know if it's going to be 
enough to really fight into this at the moment. Like, Snow almost has this BKB ready to go, and that's going to make him feel really strong in these fights. Yeah. I think as long as Aegis in the playing field, you're not looking to take a, a full 5-on-5 five five team fight. You can, like, try and pick people off who aren't with the team. Yeah, smoking on a couple play. heroes. They want to try and engage here in the mid lane. TA's not with them. No. Only Thunder. No blink. That's Ice path down. Just lands on support, the support, though. Fire. Are they even killing Jakira? Surely. Okay, they will. Uh, yeah. Macro fire down, and so is the Jakiro. But the way that played out, like, if TA's there, that might turn horrible. Yeah, <laughs> agree. Um, and even the outcome there, like, TA is not there. It's still not really a good outcome for, for Fel. You use the Rolling Thunder, you kill a support. Um, you, you know, you bring a lot of heroes while Penguin Squad were just, you know, TA is somewhere else farming. So the gold you gain is kind of being negated by the fact that Penguin Squad's just getting more farm on the map. So Monkey King switches off the BKB to a Maelstrom. Okay. Maybe looking at this game kind of slowing down a bit. Like, they're not going to, you know, they've got this Aegis, but this is just going to maybe get an outer tower or two. They're not going high ground anytime soon, at least not until, like, next Roche at earliest. Uh, and you can always, what, break down the Echo Saber to get that BKB later on as well. Pango might be dead here. Him or Shu certainly feel like they're dying uh, with the way that kid has kind of pinched him in. But he's actually just farming. I don't know if he's as aware as maybe he thinks. Burns the mana. Ice path lands on a shoe. Shoe crash with a TP attempt. They know where he is, and they had balance strike, but Snow never used it. Okay. Good annoying plays. I mean, just getting the defusal swashbuck on the TA is super annoying. Take away TA's mana pool. Doesn't have any bottle charges left. Was using clarities before. Just makes it hard for them to keep applying pressure on the map when TA doesn't have, you know, refraction and meld. It's a lot harder to take any kind of a fight. Brigand's blade. And a smoke. A smoke with TA going bot. So yeah. they're trying to pinch again. What can they find here? They would love a kill on this Ursa. Considering the fact he's level 15 and Monkey King's only level 12, yeah. Scatter blast, but a quick kill on a Chen. Arms going the other way. Pango kind of showing up a little bit. Macro Pyre even committed. Just look at where this Jakiro is kind of stuck. <laughs> it's uh. <laughs> This each black dragon really doing a lot of damage to him. <laughs> Arms did not want to back off. He's like, oh, man, I just stacked these ancients. I want to farm these. Like, I know they're coming in here, but takes as much as he can before he backs off from the ancients. But yeah, here they go. They finally make their way, get their next objectives. Look at the tier one bottom, the tier two as well. He just still has 30 seconds, and I think with Snapfire dead, with the position that Felt is playing on the map, there they have no interest in defending this tier two right now, but they are starting to TP in. So yeah, they okay, there we go. Here's the defense. Arms is really high level. Like he's got a BKB. If he just runs at this Monkey King, he might just die. Walrus punch to try and keep him alive. They go to the Rolling Thunder and that's exactly what they do. Wow. Kisses come in, down goes Crawler and they are bumping up Kid onto the high ground. He goes into the meld, but this is probably- They wait for the Aegis, the Aegis perfect. expires and that's gonna be a kill on a Kid. And they don't even lose Pango. It's a full team wipe for oh. Felt losing nothing. Insane. They Ursa just absolutely stepping up their arms. You know, he had the rough laning stage. He just charges in. He kills Monkey King inside the Wukong. Like, by the time Monkey Wukong came out, he was already, like, half health. But that Fury Swipes damage adding up uh, and just kept running at him. The Tusk doing all he could to try and delay the Ursa's damage with the Warrus Punch. But I did not see... Ursa able to just destroy Monkey King that easily inside Wukong, man. What a swing. Full team wipe. Great job stalling out the Aegis, not killing the TA. Um, with that couple of seconds left and, and a perfectly executed fight from, from Felt. Yeah, and this is all of the fact that Arms has kind of stayed hidden and farmed up. He's level 17. Like, TA's been doing not a lot of fighting, but, like, a lot of farming and felt like had a, the perfect start to the game. But, hey, well, Arms is level 17. And he's two levels ahead of TA who had a perfect start. And look at where Monkey King is too. Like he's only level 13. Yeah. It's not like this Monkey King, like he's gone very early game centric with these items. Yeah, Maelstrom gives you some farming, which also meant he didn't have a BKB that fight. But yeah, both, both cores, TA and Monkey not having a BKB there made that fight so much more difficult. Oh boy, Fade's wrapping around and they've got the smoke coming in from Phil. Yeah. 
They want to keep fighting. They smell blood in the water and they see the dust. Ooh, instead, they'll get themselves Shakiro. They saw Tusk with the wolves. Now they're going to even. Okay. Do they find TA? No way. Did they, did they see him? No, with the wolves? no. no. They, they didn't see him. They don't know he's there, thankfully, because Kid has no BKB, no blink dagger. He's just like, guys, don't come near me. He's hoping they don't go for any kind of a D ward here. I think Fade knows. He's pinging in the spot. Fade. I think I saw dark green ping. Oh, oh. okay. Fate seemed to know where he was. Oh boy. But now mellowed again. They've got a Arms gem now. Ult. Wukong's they're gonna go one more time. Can they get the kill? BKB's on the run. Good shards. Oh, that oh, keeps what? him in for the damage but from Kid. Even with better the kisses. Damage. Yeah, the kisses kill Crawler and Snow. Chen's gonna die here to Kid with a triple kill. Fade. Oh, TP's out. Nothing to stop him. What a mess of a game. These fights are insane. This has just been a treat to watch. 21 kills to 20. There's a gem on the ground. That's a huge gold swing. Assuming Penguin Squad find this. is being pinged out. I think Monkey King spotted it and he's telling his team Jakira's coming in to pick it up. Yeah, yeah. They're going to get this gem. Oh, 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 so. oh, courier, courier, courier. Oh. oh, yep. And there we go. Takes the felt gem. That's a nice 1800 gold swing. It was a race to the finish. Which is always a good place to end, but man, well, that was uh, almost the gem in the hands of Felt. Yeah, I mean it was originally their gem, so <laughs> that was the, I think Snapfire who bought it, and they go on and lose it. So costly one for them, and you know they're you know they're trying to fight around the, the power spike of their Ursa, but that shards was just absolutely incredible. This time around, Monkey got off the Wukongs earlier, so we saw Arms, he wasn't trying to fight the, the Monkey inside the Wukong this time because he was just too much health, too much sustain, and too much backup with the Tusk there as well. He was kind of happy to just walk out if he could have, but the shards yeah. were placed perfectly and the, the damage came in from the uh, TA, which worked out. Five men smoke? Yep. yep, yep okay. Yep. Can they find with this? Soldier would be a, a great catch. Yep, and it will be an easy one. Just with Roche up in a minute 30. No game for this Pengo. One, five, and six. Not what we're used to seeing from Solji. He's been a that pretty said, he has stable more player. Worth than Timber, right? Like, <laughs> True. That's insane. Yeah. I mean, Tim, Timber, the, I, I mean, I was going to say, you can still feel like what Timber's done this game because he had such a annoying lighting stage pressuring the Ursa and really slowed down Felt's timing. With that said, Ursa is caught up and is kind of owning right now, but Timber did everything he could to kind of limit that from happening. Oh Look boy, Satoshi is. just... Ginks, no, he's fine. Not enough damage. It hit me with those 17 stacks of the reactive armor. Yep. Tr try me. <laughs> it's not the lighting stage anymore where he doesn't have a skill. But Roshan, the next big thing for both these teams, particularly Penguin Squad, who have a lot of map control around the area with their wards, their vision, their gem, well, their stolen gem, and just not a lot Felt can really do. They can send out the Lycan Wolves constantly to scout. I do imagine they're going to want to contest Roshan, but it is hard to do against heroes like Monkey King and against the, the heavy vision disadvantage. Like Things like TA traps and gem just make it really difficult to maneuver around the Roshan pit. Wolf in the pit, traps coming down, Chen being very bothered. Oh. Wolf in the pit means they don't have to oh, overcommit. Chen! All right, go Scepter. Not awful, rolling thunder going the other way. Now, trying to get their hands and focus attention on Kid. Look at this, they're just oh, the right on him, waiting for the BKB to run out. The damage from arms. Because, uh, by the way, there's an Ags on Fade to just turn this bear into a wolf. He's half wolf, he's half bear, he's half man. Yeah, this Ursa is just chomping through people, and now it's Felt who are going to be the ones in the Roshan pit. Getting the TA kill through the meld with the the Black Dragon fireball. Just, here they come, though. Can Penguin Squad contest this one? They've got Wukong. I'm expecting Ice Path and a Primal Spring. No. They don't really see Penguin Squad, although they will find East now. Oh. Oh. There you go. Get getting the Ursa. Oh, my God. Oh, arms. He's living. What? 
Where's they he needed the monkey? The balance strike on the edge, but the overgrowth, the chakram doesn't land. They do have the Wukongs. They will take out Fade, but here comes Arms again into the Wukongs. What are you doing? Jesus, Arms. <laughs> they say they keep people at arm's length, but not like that. Yep, kind of walked in that Kiki one. Rush is so low. Oh, and Satoshi drops the shoe. Oh no, Snow's sticking around. He's still got the gem. He still may look to come back in. Yeah, he is. <laughs> 1v3. Boundless strikes. I don't Snow know about though. this. Oh, Rolling Thunder in the, oh, in the no. mouth of the pit. That's not good. Yep. But here comes Kit. Now Kit is going to be in okay. on this one. The gem's on the deck, so that means they should be able to see him if he tries to hide with the meld. But the double tap on a Chen. Kid going to try and fight here. Shield crash, BKB, buyback for the Snapfire. Running down this Pango, and he'll die. What is going on? Snowball to stop the TP. They'll knock him out with the Walrus oh. Punch. And now Roche is the objective. It, it was 3v1. Roche and they couldn't get done. Roche. Oh, oh, my God. That Ursa walking back in and, and dying in the Wukongs was so costly there. I, it, it was like felt had won the fight. They had Roshan. Roshan was like 10% health. They just had to, you know, get out of the Wukongs, chill, wait for Ursa maybe to heal up or even just, you know, back off for a little bit and re-engage. Keep Penguin Squad out of the pit and instead, suddenly yeah. it's a TA walking away with, with Aegis and Shard. <laughs> Walk away and survive and take Roche? No, this is NA Division 2 that you're talking about. We're going to keep <laughs> fighting and going. Works out well. Uh, well, depending on who you're rooting for. This game's been mayhem. It's, it's, this has definitely been the, the most hyped game today for me. Um, with so much at stake as well, Penguin Squad definitely playing some, some fun Dota. Uh, we've definitely not seen Felt on their A game, but I think Felt overall has played pretty well this game. It's just been so wacky because of the way the lanes were set up which I think was maybe some bad decisions from Felt, but they're, they're doing everything they can to make it work. Now things get a little bit tougher for Chen, right? Like he wants to go to the Mortimer's Kisses, but if there's just a trap set there, silence him with the shard picked up for Kid. He's going into a silver edge. Like I, I, I kind of think this Aegis could turn into a high ground push if the fight next fight goes right for them. Yeah, there. Games like this can get blown up and very quickly. Here's like TA you can just break your base so fast. And now that these BKBs on the playing field, we see Penguin Squad have a much easier time approaching these fights where things start to look a, a little scary for them was when they, these fights are happening pre BKB. Hmm. Putting uh, some vision down in the jungle. Uh, time to work with this Aegis. So let's see if they just wait for next item or so to go. No. I think the, the concern for Felt is just how their draft is going to kind of scale here for me. Uh, you've gone this like an ag, so you make your Ursa like an even bigger, scarier bear in these fights, but it's like, it feels very much like Ursa is their late game, and then they haven't got a whole lot else going for them. Like Lycan, like ags, AC coming out, like this is like, let's team items. Same for the Pengo, who's going to have Shivers plus Diffusal, like these are team items, whereas on the Radiant side, I just think you're scaling a lot better. You've got Monkey and TA. Even Timbersaw with an Ag Scepter is going to have some crazy late-game damage potential. So I think there's just a lot more damage and scaling coming out of Penguin Squad's side. Mm. This is scaling enough. Yeah, Got to take some good, good fights, too. Like, yeah. there's going to be a uh, Wolf Ursa just charging at this TA every fight, limiting her ability to, you know, right click and do stuff. Well, that's certainly for sure. <laughs> you know, uh, Ursa not afraid as we've seen. No. Has the shard queued up. You know, usually Ursa doesn't have to buy a shard because you're taking Roche getting shard for free, but it's such a good shard. It can make such a big difference in these fights, getting these little mini enrage buffs. There's that tier two tower mid. They're trying to push bottom, so at least getting something or hoping to get something out of this. Yeah, I think avoiding fights while Aegis is up there, you know, just posing a split push threat. They're not going to, like, hard commit to this if you're felt. You're basically saying, like, you know, if you guys five men down mid or top, we're going to apply pressure to your bottom tier three tower. Um, you know, they want to avoid any kind of team fight while Aegis is on the playing field. It's only got a minute and a half or so left, so, you know, 
most likely felt will just do what they can to avoid full-on 5v5 fights. They do smoke up, like, you know, if they can split the Penguin Squad team up, they see TA bottom now, they know they can take a fight or find kills, like, on the top side of the map, where Monkey King has been scattered by a Lycan Wolf. He's going for a TP, oh, and they got they him! They got him! They broke that tree with the Battle Fury, and they will get the kill on a Snow, but they will lose the Pango for this. Ooh. No. Not sure. What happened to Pengo, but yeah, great find. The Lycan Wolves, it's, you know, we've always hype up Fade when we cast Felt there, and that's a kill that he's basically setting up with his vision uh, for the team. You know, they see TA bottom, they know Monkey's farming top, and even though, you know, Monkey thinks he's safe. He's like, I'll just hop to trees, TP out, I know they're running at me. Um, but they scout exactly which tree he goes to because of that Lycan Wolf. So, is the trade, though, going to be worth it? Uh, I'm wondering how comfortable Penguin Squad are going to be in pushing because they need to force these yeah. towers all the way down. I think they're forced to just slow it down and farm now. Like, you're definitely not pushing without Monkey King. They haven't really got much of a gold lead. 5k gold is really nothing at 30 minutes into the game. Um, you know, killing a Pengo is not the most farmed hero here. It is, he is kind of the, the team fight presence of Felt, but it's pretty much a, an Aegis that's going to get wasted at this point. Or it's going to expire without much ado. And great job by Felt using train protector in one lane. Like Pengo dying there. Like, you know, I didn't see how it happened. It seemed like a death that maybe could have been avoided. But he's kind of doing his job where it's just like keep Penguin Squad, you know, on the back foot. Keep so they have to keep defending. Finally, Penguin Squad maybe get Felt with this five man smoke. They're going to run right into Felt. There's the jump in. Snowball. It's going to hit onto the Pango. They go to the battle. Let's strike that lens out of two. They get the kill on the Pango to start the fight off. They go to the Macrofire down on the ground. In the Wukong's crawler is going to fall. It's a dead tusk for a Pango. But Ursa, how much longer do you have? He's got the wolf by. By Fade. The damage. The right clicks. Dying, though, channel. Yeah. Oh, here comes the Monkey King. Is Bear Wolf stronger than Monkey King? Oh, not even going to try and find out. He's actually just going to run away. I mean, these are the 5v5 fights that Felt want to avoid. Like, even when they're just down, they're just not quite ready to take a full-on fight, especially when they're kind of caught up by surprise there. Tusk is the one getting the jump, instantly killing one, and they weren't even able to get things like overgrowth off in the fight, so... And a great job kiting the Ursa and his BKB. Like, he wasn't really able to kill anyone outside of the Tusk, and his entire kind of BKB and rage just got wasted there. And then he got bit late and had to run. Won't so lead to any like, kind of base taking, but it's still a, a good little fight for Penguin Squad nonetheless. Didn't even lead to them getting the tier two tower bottom, which <laughs> is a little bit surprising. Yeah. They're, you know, I, I think it's not it's not the biggest deal. Like, it is nice to get that tower, especially if you get high ground later. Like, you may be prevented from getting mega creeps when they're still tier two standing, but I think they just want to reset when they're, you know, they, their BKBs are down. Some of their key spells are, are, are down. They've lost Tusk, who is basically their big playmaker. He's the one starting most of these fights. Like, one of the things with their three cores is none of them really initiate. So, I think it's important for them to have the Tusk alive. Mm. Another, Another smoke. Wow. Yeah. Smoke into smoke. It was near a ward. They'll go in. They've got the Walrus Punch. They're going to get the Pango out of the fight immediately once again. They'll go to the Shape Shift, take out Crawler, and the Timber. But Wukong's command. Macropire down, Chen gonna burn out. Two for two so far. And uh, 250, how many overboard creep? No, it's not oh, just chasing. Ursa Arms just goes right in oh for the God. Jakiro. He's so beefy. Oh, it doesn't get the right tree for the Monkey Broken King. Broken near. oh boy. Now the buyback comes in for the Jakiro. He's still trying to run. They have Boundless Strike available, but they're just not doing any damage. Overgrowth comes in, goes to the Refraction, the right click, still not enough no, to get the kill spell. here on the Ursa. Kid, can he find Shoe in the tree. trees? Oh, yes, he can. Free Ooh. shot him. I mean, this Ursa is theirs. an absolute menace. Beast in these fights when he gets Wolf Bit doing 7,000 damage. Next highest was TA with the 4.6k. But it's still just, it feels like it's all Ursa. Like, their entire team fight is just Ursa killing people, whereas on the Penguin Squad side, you've just got more things that can threaten. You know, the longer the fight goes, you know, this Monkey King's building up damage. He's also sustaining really well as the Basher, the Mage Slayer, to just make life really annoying. And TA, of course, um, you know, if you're not bursting her down, she's going to kill somebody eventually. 
Yeah, TA, it felt like the right clicks weren't doing anything, though. To that Ursa, at least. But yeah. soon to have the Swift Blink, which is going to be even more disgusting. And Roche is up in a minute, too. Oh, Snow. Trouble bottom. EKB. And oh, guess is wrong. No, no way. He knows where he is. Oh, right. just got out. I was going to say, turning into a tree, that doesn't work in, like, real games, does it? <laughs> just juked him. You know, it was kind of a 50-50 which way he went. Now Pango oh, forced, forced to... out. Yeah, it feels like he's but just they're... rolling Thunder to run, but he's going to turn and try fight. Uh, yeah, they've got Shapeshift used, and now they're going to run. Yeah. I was like, without well, Ursa, I don't think you take that kind of fight. Ursa's Ooh, not too far. Going forward, and Pango might die for the 10th time this game. They've got the break thanks to the Silver Edge. Kid's also got that Swift Blink. Overgrowth. Wukong's nobody in the circle. They take out the Pango. Dead for 60 seconds. And that's with Roche coming back up in five. Yeah, I don't think Felt would have fight. They need that Ursa BKB, particularly even if it gets Wolf Bit. He just gets kited so much. Wants to finish off. Yeah. Maybe hit his level 25 as well. See where things go here, but yeah, it's getting, definitely getting harder the longer this game goes on. Just feels like Penguin Squad across the board are just getting more and more tools to address the Ursa. You know, your supports are getting Ghost Scepters on Jakiro, Four Staffs. You've got a Scythe of Vice on the Timbersaw. Tusk is going to have a Heaven's Halberd. So all, everybody's just itemizing to make life annoying for Ursa. And at some point, there's just going to be too many, you know, utility items that kite the Ursa, limit his ability to, to attack uh, or disable him that it just feels like arms won't be able to carry this game unless they get the perfect team fight. I want to say at some point, Snow starts to build into more carry items as well. He's going into the Bloodthorn next yeah. after the Abyssal Blade, but like, you might be able to output some more damage as time goes on. Spell Prism for Lycan is kind of what he wants. Considering he's got Quickening Charm, but who's he going to give Spell Prism um, off to? Yeah, it looks like he passed it back to base. That's interesting. Sure. Top lane. Arms. Shoe. Trying to fight this, and Snowball comes in. Walrus Punch still inside the Wukong. Eats the cheese. Arms, if he dies here, uh, well, he is not going to have buyback. Uh-oh. Well, that's definitely... Yeah, I mean, they've gotten ages now that looks like it's just a high ground maybe like there's your your light game there's your carry choose already looking to maybe cut some waves on the tree and protector trying to go behind uh, enemy lines but there's one creep wave that has to be addressed first you know they can maybe glyph the tower to multi-shot down the creep wave oh boy. I know, boy satoshi with a solo kill no buyback oh. on this pango either so like a support he's just killing the enemy mid laner i'm shane oh Ooh. he got he got buyback he got the gold yep just barely had it that oh they're gonna bite him they want to they want to go there's no pango now like it makes it so much harder howl swift blink the tower's gone there's the abyssal with the cookie the follow-up but now they've got the snowball to get the save here they're also gonna it's get the fine. melt strike off and if they get the kill here onto the earth so that's gonna be big issues the overgrowth comes in it's gonna be a three shot coming through from kid onto this tree and protector glate near Enrage, buyback coming in from Shu. And these racks are not long for the world. No. There's the bonus refraction charges with the 25 talent just make this TA so damn tanky on the front lines. Like, the wolf bit Ursa went on TA thinking, okay, I'll just chew through refraction and then start killing her, maybe get some bashes, but TA just stayed full health the entire time. And it's a free lane of racks and a disengage for penguin squad who now have a 20k gold lead they may be staying alive here in div 2 you know they had one of the toughest opponents to play to you know keep their spot spot in dpc and they may just be pulling it off here easy let's pick up smoke off the ground interesting that was weird or no he picked up two infused raindrops i believe So now, big wave bottom. <laughs> TA says, Snow, you're not the carry. I'll take all of these. Just get all that juicy gold. It's what, Nullifier next? Yeah. Well, that's 
Now a tier two that's definitely going to drop here for the side of Felt. I don't think Felt want to defend anything except their high ground. You know, fighting into this Aegis is just such a tricky situation. Now a nullifier as well on the TA, giving her even more offensive power. The spell, the dispel as well, can make life so annoying for things like the Ursa if you're getting your overpower taken away. Timeless Relic, Stormcrafter. No. A little surprised that they didn't want to continue to push forward onto the high ground, knowing that Ursa's like yeah. one death away from being out of this game. I agree. I. I I'm not sure if there's a certain item or level timing they're waiting for or what it may be. Um, you know, it feels like you've got the Aegis now. You, it's going to be expiring in a minute's time. Like, you know, put your TA, have your TA at least poke the tier three tower from the low ground or something. And if she gets gone on, you know, we saw top lane. You just force staff her away or she'll survive the refraction. But something about the position oh. Penguin Squad didn't like. Double damage is going to be, <laughs> that's going to be the, the, the item. No. Yep. And if I'm in smoke from Felt, like they want to do something and they're going to go and find themselves Satoshi. Can they kill him quick enough is really the answer or question. And they're going to go to the kisses on this too. Snowball saves him, pulls him the other way. And eventually he falls and Crawler dies too. So this is save your friend syndrome. Yeah, kids here with a DD, but he needs to be careful. And like disc. Hurricane Pike. Luke just expires. Oh, okay, but Urs is dead. Yeah, dead for two minutes. That's the damage gone. They'll buy back on the tusk. That's also a dead pangolier thanks to those uh, double damage coming in. Snow's just trying to jump the hell out of there. Same for the the tusk trying to chase him down. And this should be the high ground now with a DDTA for a couple more seconds. These buildings just melting. Yeah, living armor or not. These buildings don't have much time on this world. Walrus Punch, Treant, Primal Spring, Balance Strike, Snowball lands, but he's right by his base. They don't want to go in too far. Should probably focus the objectives, and that's, what's, that's what Kid is doing. Yeah. Eyes on the prize. Securing the dub, and Mega Creep's going to be coming out. No way to defend or take a fight without this Ursa. They put all their eggs in the Ursa basket, and, well, wow. that basket has been flipped over, and these eggs are smashed all over the ground. Yeah, I don't know if you had to do the school project about getting an egg down from the roof safely with a parachute, but it is not working for Felt. <laughs> yeah. I'll glyph the tier fours, delay things a bit here, but I think Penguin Squad should just go for the GG. 40 seconds. Ursa is like the only way this game somehow becomes a win, and they have 40 seconds to try and end it before he's back alive. Just focus the objectives. They, they yep. are like going to get these kills, and I understand maybe wanting to get the tree and to make these buildings fall a little bit quicker, but you still have 30 seconds. Yeah, just Wukongs. Yep. Keep them away and make sure that you take these towers and, and get the base. The kills will come to you. They have to defend the throne. <laughs> That's exactly what they're doing, but Crawler ends up dead. He bought back down for 100. Fade falls for 80. The throne exposed. And Timber Chain all the way across. Jakiro might be next. Goes to the Ghost Scepter. Uh, again, Ursa the throne back in five. could just fall, but now with... A lot of the attention just on the tree and protector. The throne is open. Urs is going to try and make a, a one last man stand and go after this Monkey King, but he's got the Abyssal Blade, the right clicks, the Abyssal going the other way, and eventually he does get the kill. But now, well, TA, yeah, base time? Maybe base time. Nola Fire, nah. GG well played, <laughs> is called instead, and they will get the victory, stay in Div 2, and potentially force a four-way tiebreaker. Penguin Squad Ooh. waddle their way to a two-